Big Sills. Football Friday. Hard to believe it's the final week, regular season of the NFL. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But you know what that means? When things go fast like that, that means it's been entertaining this year. When things drag on, most of the time they're not entertaining. That's why we say we got like the fastest four hours in television when you come here each and every single day. And by the way, we thank you very much for choosing us. I know you have many options and you come here. And most of you come here each and every single day. And we so thank you. It's kind of like the first week, as I said a couple of days ago, for the start of the 2024 life, right? I mean, this is the new week and this is kind of the new year. So it's been quite a week for the Eagles. It's been quite a week. Quite a week. Really quite a month. I'll tell you something. Now you're 48 hours removed. From listening to A.J. Brown and the media try to dissect A.J. Brown. You know, it's a great lesson. Tone and I were just talking about journalism a little bit and broadcasting on where things land and how people talk. And when you're an orator and you're a guy who's trying to convey a point and you want it to land in a certain place, you got to be careful on the type of words you use. Believe me. You know, it's one of the reasons. Hey, just so you know, Tone, it's one of the reasons I write things down now. Because if I see the words that I'm going to say, you know, I don't go off a script or anything, but if I at least see what I'm going to say, I kind of keep control of my verbiage. Instead of just going half cocked off on some sort of tangent, using words that probably aren't appropriate, I kind of now see it. It, it. It's not editing myself. It's just making sure it lands where I want it to. And I'm getting to a point here. We'll look at Eagles and Giants. We're going to look at the future of the Eagles here in a second. But I, I, I want to throw this at you here, what I took away this week from A.J. Brown and the media coverage. You know, I, I really want to point this out to you before we get going. There's no doubt that athletes and media people are completely different people. Media people pretend that they're dime store psychiatrists and they try to dissect how a player looks, how a player sounds, how a player acts, and they write their narratives off that. A guy like A.J. Brown, he just wants to go out and play ball. He don't care what he looks like. He doesn't care at times what he sounds like. And sometimes most athletes don't care how they act. Most of them just want to be gauged on their performance. You see, media people, all of that's important to them. Athletes, it's not. That's why when AJ says something or Darius Slay says something, the media people dissect it like they're psychiatrists or like they're a psychologist, and try to form a narrative off of something that kid didn't mean it to land there. And I think that's what A.J. Brown is. A.J. Brown looked at himself as a leader. You got guys that are writing columns and making inferences that he's a monster. I mean, how, how he sees the media people looking at him as a monster. Athletes don't care about that. They'll wear their hat backwards. That's not important to them. It's important to media people. How they look, how they sound, how they present themselves. Athletes, no one cares. They just want to go on a football field and play. And there lies the difference in the coverage on how you cover a guy like AJ or T.O. You'll make your own assessment your dime store psychologist or psychiatrist opinion of a player, even though you have no credibility. It's like when you're going over the steroid era. Well, Bonds' head, it grew. What are you, a doctor? Of course you're not. You're just playing one in your column. 
Well, Bonds is on steroids. How do you know that, dude? You don't even have a college degree, and you're telling me and acting like a doctor? How would you know Bonds was on juice? Why? Because someone told you? That was always the rub that I had with that whole Bonds coverage. Okay? You get a guy writing a column about Barry Bonds taking steroids who didn't even graduate college or went to night school. Nothing wrong with that. But to sit there and try to tell me you've got some sort of doctorate and you're some sort of doctor and you know why Bonds, his strength and his eyes and all this and that, it was preposterous listening to people. But this is what today's media and this is what the media do. They, they psychoanalyze you. And they tried to psychoanalyze A.J. Brown this week. They let the kid go out and play. I'll tell you what, if this thing does get turned around, A.J. Brown's going to be called a leader. He's going to be called an, in, an integral part of what turned that thing around. Hey, we're all hoping for that. I'm hoping A.J. Brown connected with his team and his team went, shit, you're right. Aren't you? I am. I am. Dude, it's the media that makes it a circus. It's not the players. The players are trying to calm the water. The front office is a circus because they're not football people. Look at what you have. You have non-football people covering the team and non-football people directing the team. And you got the players in the middle with the coaches. What would you think you were going to get in Philly? <laughs> A great mixture? Think what you have in Philadelphia. Non-football people with your analytics department and non-football people that cover the team. Yeah, I'm sure that's a good remedy for a team that's in a Chernobyl meltdown right now. Is it normal for a GM to be in team meetings? Goddard said how he is in every team meeting. That is absolutely the most asinine thing. I've never seen a general manager in every team meeting. Mom, but he didn't really say that. Please tell me that's not true, that the general manager is in every team meeting. Because if the general manager is in every team meeting, that means he's in every meeting when it comes to putting the game plan together. Howie Roseman is involved in the game plan too. Good grief. Know your role, son. Know your role. He didn't really say that, did he? Mamba. Dallas Goddard said that Howie Roseman is in every team meeting. I wanted to be positive today. That guy is an ass clown. He is a clown. I saw him at the practice, and that's all right. I've seen GMs at practice. What could he possibly add to a team meeting? It undermines Nick Sirianni. It's like Jerry Jones showing up at team meetings. It undermines Mike McCarthy or any coach who ever takes the helm. My goodness. Yeah, but man, this guy is so over his skis. It's insane. Howie Roseman is over his skis. Get this. Think about what Goddard did today. AJ saying that Nick made that story up in Seattle. Goddard telling everyone that Howie's in every team meeting. Jalen talking about accountability. AJ having to talk to the media to straighten things out. These players are fed up with the front office. I don't even really think it's the coaching staff. Holy cow.
Dallas Goddard said that Howie is in every meeting. Why? Why? What could you possibly add to a defensive team meeting? What insight could you possibly? That makes me know now the size decision on being yanked as D coordinator was 1,000% Howie Roseman's decision, not Nick Sirianni. He told Nick to make the move so that he could, as my friend Tone would say, technically, it was Nick who removed him. Mamba goes, yes, it's on tape. Man. Howie Roseman's in every team meeting. Shit, I was going to break shit down here. I, I don't know. Why? What's the point? What's the point? I heard Tone and Rob Ellis for three hours talking and trying to find the good in this. And when you got people in the front office undermining your coaching staff and your players, what's the point? Here. Here is Howie Roseman's superstar strength. Contracts, finding veteran players. And I'm actually, I was going to give the guy a lot of kudos here. And we're probably going to do that. Because I think the one thing, the few things that he does well he finds underutilized players. Hey, by the way, you guys are out of your mind. I don't think Kevin Byard's been that awful. I think he's been exactly what we thought he was going to bring. He's better than anything they had. Not saying that he's superstar, but he's better than anything they had. What did you think you were going to find, Ronnie Lott? Seriously, what did you think you were going to find? A Hufanga? What, 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 what were you looking for? Brian Dawkins? What did, what did you think you were going to find in a trade midpoint of the season? You, you're making it sound like you were going to bring in Nicholas Morrow and Zach Cunningham and turn those guys into Harry Carson and Lawrence Taylor. That's what you get when you go further in the season. Hey, get this, 30 D Byard of 2016. It's better than anything you got in 2023. I'll take Byard 2016. It's better than the shit you had back there lining up. That's what I'm saying. You overestimated what the impact of these players were going to mean when they brought him in. You overvalued your own evaluation. Okay? Every time you make a move, you think that move is gold, and it's not. Sometimes you got to bring a little bronze in. Sometimes you got to look at what's out there. But what you do is you pat yourself on the back. That's what this guy likes doing, patting himself on the back. Dude, all I give a shit about here going into the playoffs, if this team could kind of slow people down. Hey, get this. The Eagles could go far if they can hold teams under 400 yards in total offense. Yeah. I saw the Colts do that one year. I saw the Colts get to a Super Bowl with a horrible defense. Just keep them under 400 yards. See what happens. You might be able to do so. I don't know. Dallas Goddard said that Howie Roseman's in every single meeting today. That just confirms it even more so. That guy thinks he knows every single thing about football and he don't know shit about it. He's an accountant. I just rewatched the reporter asked Howie in the meeting when AJ spoke to the team. Goddard said Howie is in every team meeting. Thank you, Mamba. Howie's in every team meeting. 
What is a general manager doing in every team meeting? Your job is, that's not your job title. Your job title is personnel, cutting contracts, helping in the hiring of assistant and head coaches, not micromanaging. That's micromanaging. Jesus, criminy. Mamba, you took me in a different area, man. I cannot believe that the players are now subtly talking and telling you they've had it. I think personally, the players want this season to end. That dude, Marcus, I'm not going to go with that word. Dude, the ge- I've never seen a general manager in any pro football organization in every team meeting, defense, offense, D-line meetings. I've never seen that in the history of the pro football hall of fame, coaches, anybody. I have never seen that in my life. He's in team meetings. Your guy's a bum. I have no respect for that guy. You know why? Because he doesn't have respect for his coaches. Let them do their job. Man. Do do you know what the right thing to do right now is if you're a coach and you're a head coach? Hey, Sills, will Hurts get the win on Sunday and break the Eagles' all-time season passing record over 4K? I think it's 4,035. He needs like 197 yards to get to 4K. I think it's 4,065 or 35, the Eagle record for the single-season passing mark. So, um, will he throw for two? It probably has to throw for like 250. Will they keep him in that long? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I don't know because I think there'll be somewhat scoreboard watching. Okay. Do I think he throws for 200 yards? I don't know how the game will play out. Okay. For them to allow him. That record's not important compared to his health. 4,039, so he needs roughly around 238 yards passing, 237, something like that, or 233 to uh, pass uh, Wentz, 234. I don't know. It's just going to depend, okay? It's just going to depend on how I think the Cowboy game plays out. Dan, please keep dog. I immensely respect your opinion on football. It's why I listen. But when you dog us, we win. So please keep. <laughs> okay. You win? You've lost four or five. And as I told you, you weren't the team that you were when you were 10 and 1. <laughs> what do you mean? Hey. Hey, nuts. You've lost four or five. Okay? They've lost four or five. LJ asks a great question. My bosses don't talk to me at all. They trust me to put a show on. I don't have show meetings. I have big sales meetings. They trust me. That's what good managers do. You hire a guy who you think is super talented, and you let him do his job. Now, if I had, like, multiple guys with me, sure, I'd want to have a conversation, but I would have that conversation. Bosses don't sit in my meetings. So no, LJ. Ask Joe Bell. Bosses don't sit in my meetings. I make the decision on the content. My name's on the marquee.
My boss doesn't sit there and go, yeah, you should say this and you should say that. It doesn't work that way, kid. They trust me. Unlike Philly. They don't trust their coaches. Sad. 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 Let's move on. Oh, wait. You know, one thing I got to give my good friends before that come on with Sports Take with Tone and Rob, they got great content. They got great content. Dude, um, Bird Street 65 does a great job. Okay, Bill does a nice job. Our post-game show is sensational. It's the best in the city. Everybody's different. I love the different shows that we have on our network. I think it's the best network that you have in Philly by far. Because we're not cheerleaders to the football team. We're not cheerleaders to anybody, really. But you know what I and, – and there's a part of me that agrees. And Tone will be on with us at 3.30, and he can, he can fire back at this. But most of them are like, you're not good enough to take and sit the players. What's more important right now? Surrendering the East and resting your guys? The aging veteran guys that you've – like Josh Sweat? Jordan Davis, who've played more reps than they have in their entire career and basically give them a week off and a bye or to play them in a Giants game where they'll probably have to play 60 minutes if you're going to try. And get this, if the Cowboys win, it would have been counterproductive. Doesn't it make sense to surrender and concede the East? More so than trying to sit there and pray that Washington loses. What's more important to you? Winning the East? You're still going to be a wild card team. You're still going to have to play in the wild card. Now you get it at home, but you don't get the rest. But if you rest the guys, you get the rest, and you got to play in the opening round anyway. And you're on AstroTurf up in New York with a chance to get guys injured. Doesn't it make more sense to concede the East fundamentally and sit, guys? Give Hertz a break? Uh, maybe you throw Hertz out there to try to get that 4K. Okay? And I got to tell you something else. Let's get into it. Why it makes sense to concede the East. I'm going to show you why. You're going to win the game anyway. Let's, let's get into how I see this thing play out. Eagles are a massive free fall team right now. You think a week off would be helpful or hurtful? Just to get your shit together. I mean, you're getting ready for the postseason and you're, you haven't even really talked about the Giants this week. I don't think starters should play on that field in that weather. There's a Nor'easter rolling in too. You know, you know what? The, here, tell me if you agree with this. The only thing that the Giants didn't do two weeks ago was complete the comeback like Arizona did because they played pretty well in the second half, did they not? Okay. Didn't they play pretty well in the second half when Tyrod Taylor? Tyrod Taylor, had didn't he get 400 yards in offense last week? Dude, I'll tell you what, Tyrod Taylor, pretty good player. He's not a horrible player. Okay, I mean, should you surrender and concede the East? Put your guys out there that you think need playing time. 
And you got to remember something else. Think about this as you, and before you answer this question, okay? The Giants really have to consider their draft position. If things work out where they lose this game to Philly, do you know there's a great possibility that the Giants could go from the fifth pick to the second pick? in the April draft, giving them more latitude on whether they should stick with Daniel Jones, draft a quarterback, get pieces around him. How about signing Marvin Harrison Jr. if you're in New York for Daniel Jones? Why in the world would you want to win that game? If you win, you lose. And just to say, hey, we beat the Eagles and I lose draft position is not something I think the front office would be thinking is a good move since the Giants have made shitty moves in the last 10 years. Why would they want to win that game? What is in the New York Giants' best interest? In winning that game. When there's a chance they could go as high as two. In the NFL April draft. Giant players are playing for their jobs. I'm going to give Kathy a Philadelphia Eagle history lesson. Guys were playing for their jobs, Kathy. When you guys were 4 11 and 1, and how we sat the entire room, including Jalen Hurts, they pulled starters because he wanted a better draft pick. You forget that? Kathy, he fixed the game so that he could get better draft positioning. Or did you forget that? How he did it. Why would the Giants want to win that game? Howie pulled the starters in that fight. I want to take a look at Nate Sudfeld. Sure, Howie. Sure. Sure. Giant players are worried about finding another job. Kathy, you're under the impression that the giant players control their own destiny when the general manager and an organization decides to sit a guy. Here's what I would do. I would sit Barkley. What's the point? Why would I put more tread on a guy that I may be trying to trade? He signed a one-year tenor, which means he's going to be a free agent. If I'm Barkley, why would I play to get hurt on that turf in a meaningless game? Why would I play? Why? Because I've got pride. Great. Well, I got a family to feed and I got a bank account to put money in. And I got a career I'm trying to extend. James, I heard that. Oh, you bet. By the way, James, did you see that pathetic um, interview that John Kincaid did with Adam Shifter? Adam uh, Shifter, and did you did you see what he said? They 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 positioned it like it was a report. It was an opinion that Nick Sirianni's job is safe. That's an opinion. That's not a report. Adam Schefter is not an opinion guy. He's supposed to be reporting. But what they've done is they've collided both. And now you don't know what he's saying most of the time. That's not a report that Nick Sirianni's job is safe. 
That's an opinion. And I don't give a shit about Adam Schefter's opinion. I only care when he talks about inside reports like Jay Glazer does. I don't give a shit about his opinion. Why would I listen to Adam Schefter? He has no opinion I care about. The only thing I go to him for is his reporting on player movement. But when you start colliding that, you start crossing over again who you are and how you are being received by people. Basically, you're bullshitting people. Yeah, Jay Glazer doesn't put his opinion on it. He reports who he talks to. That's what makes him better. Correct, Cody. That's correct. Adam Schefter puts his opinion on it. And so 97.5, the fanatic positioned it like it was a report that Sirianni's job is, he's not, and his job is not safe. That was just the dude's opinion. It's an opinion. Okay? You, so you actually think the Philadelphia Eagles are going to tell Adam Shifter, Adam Shifty, Adam Shifter, that guy's so bad at his job. Jay Glazer's great. Because he doesn't throw opinion into it. And he doesn't skew his job title. I have no respect for that guy. It's the same guy that put out there on a tweet, Jason Pierre Paul's medical records, and also when he blew his fingers off, he illegally, people don't report this, ESPN had to write a check for $8 million to Jason Pierre Paul because of the HIPAA violation that he had by putting his personal records out there for the public to see. That guy doesn't give a shit about the players. He was putting out there in public Jason Pierce Paul's personal medical information, which is private in this country. That's a reporter? Okay. Sure. How'd you like your private health records put out there by a guy trying to get to a story first so that he could tell you it came from him? got a medical condition, and this guy's putting it out there. It's the biggest shit that you can go wrong on when it comes to players. He's putting a player's medical information out there for the public to see. Look, you might want to take the Giants in the points here. It's four and a half, I think. Um, I think the Eagles win this game 2017, but you might want to take the four and a half. I think this is going to be a sloppy football game in the weather. I think this is going to be a sloppy football game all around. I think the players have surrendered. I think the organization has surrendered. I think the coaching staff has surrendered and they're going to beat them because they're better, but not by much because what, what the problem is now with the Eagles, I'm not sure they care enough to be champions. I, I just don't know if they care enough. I just don't know if they care enough. That's where I'm at. I just don't know if this guy, I, I, I just don't know if they care enough. Do, do you think that that team has a Super Bowl mentality and a championship mentality right now where you would go into the postseason going, that team right there is one of the favorites to win the Super Bowl? Nobody in their right mind would put that football team in a position right now where you would think that that's a Super Bowl team because they don't believe it. 
You got a general manager in every single team meeting. I've never heard of such a thing. I have never heard of such a thing. I could give you a great example of this. You think Bruce Allen or any of those guys in Tampa, when they won the Super Bowl with Rich McKay and them guys, do you think those guys were sitting in team meetings? I know for a fact they weren't because I was in some of those meetings. They, you think Rich McKay sits in meetings, defensive meetings, game plan meetings? Absolutely not. He has never in his life been in one of those meetings, ever. As a matter of fact, I know Kevin Demoff and Les Snead very well in Los Angeles. They're never in any of those meetings, ever, unless invited. Unless invited by Sean McVay. I know that for a fact. I know, I've, known Sean Mc, I've known Sean McVay since he was 12 years old. I have never seen such a thing. I have never. Hey, I know John Lynch. You think John Lynch sits in team meetings with Kyle Shanahan? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what he's doing? He's setting up the draft board, free agency for March 17th, contract negotiations. Do you know the only thing that the only thing that general managers are doing right now is determining if you're a bad football team, should we play a player to get an incentive that he may be rolling on? 2013 Ravens were in the same boat as us, lost four or five. <laughs> You're comparing the Ravens and the Eagles when you have John Harbaugh and Ozzie Newsom as your GM versus Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman as yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Those are grown-ups. Okay, those are grown-up men. And by the way, I wouldn't mind Ozzie Newsom in my team meeting. He's a Hall of Fame player. Okay, I mean, hey, if Ozzie wants to step into an offensive meeting and he sees something that could help a tight end, I might want to listen to that. I, I might want to listen to Ozzie. Not as he one of the greatest general managers of all time, but he's also one of the greatest NFL tight ends of all time. Okay. You got a general manager in every team meeting. What an ass clown. It, it, I mean, no wonder nobody says anything. Dude, stop with who's going to be the coach. Should the coach be fired? What are you going to do? <laughs> Just stop it. Stop it. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. The inability for you to be consistently great, you can't and you're not able to because you're not capable of it. I now know who you are. You're not capable of consistently being great. You have no chance of it. You can't. You're not capable. You don't have the propensity for being great consistently. You can't maintain greatness. 10 and 1, you fell off the map. There was a great example of it. You went as far as you could, then it fell apart. Perfect example. This year is a prime example of the lack of maintaining success. Right there in a nutshell. 10 and 1, you fell off the map. Most good teams can rally themselves. Like, San Francisco, three-game losing streak. See, those people all had injuries. Buffalo had bad coaching. And they righted the ship. What's your excuse? What? what is, think about this. The, the, the two best teams now, because they've won, they have won their home field advantages, right? The Ravens and the... Um, 49ers. I mean, didn't the Ravens lose to the Colts this year? Am I right, Tone? Didn't the Ravens lose to the Colts in overtime? 
I thought there was like a blown call in that game late. I think it was like an overtime game. They lost to the Colts. If I'm not mistaken, I think that team lost to the Colts. Not that the Colts are bad. Not that the Colts are bad. But I, I think that Ravens team lost to that Colts team. Think about that. What'd they do? Rally the troops. They had more things simpler. The 49ers have a three-game losing streak. Okay? Injuries. What's your excuse? Howie was my boy a week ago. Howie's never been my boy. Remember something. He's phenomenal at writing contracts. He's phenomenal at finding undervalued veteran players on rosters. Stick to it, kid. As a drafter, he blows. As a meddler, he's awful. He's hit and miss on everything he does. Coaches, players. Coaches, players. Coaches, players. Here, here's a great example of it. Is this not his MO? Hit on Shane Steichen, hit on Jonathan Gannon, missed on Brian Johnson, missed on Sean Desai. I mean, what else do you need to know? What else do you need to know? Seals hates Howie. He's a Florida guy. Could be some truth to that. Could be some truth to that. Okay? Not another fill. I wish Dan was wrong, but he's correct. This is why we aren't winning a Super Bowl this year. You know what's crazy, too, Philly fan? You could have. If you just did the right thing. Get TJ the money. Do you know, t- hey, hey, Philly fan, do you know that TJ Edwards is just as important on your defense as Roquan Smith and Fred Warner are to their teams? And some idiots will say, Cilio is now saying TJ Edwards is as good as those players. And if you have any kind of common sense and brains, you didn't hear me say that. I'm talking about impact. I'm talking about impact on the defense. Is TJ Edwards as good as those? Look, I don't have to quantify that. Any common sense idiot would know that that's not the case. But his impact. And you know what you guys did? All of you in here were telling me that Kobe Dean was going to be the guy I told you was a bum. That's not fair. I'm going to take that back. It's not fair to the kid. Okay? I'm going to take that back. Sorry, dude. I blame the general manager for putting him in a position to make him look like a bum. He was not ready. I said it from day one. 99% of you in here were telling me he's a molecular engineer or he's some bullshit smart. I don't give a shit about that. Has he played? No. Is he going to be the Mike linebacker? Yes. Okay. He's never played it. 34 plays is never played it. Mop up duty. You give him the green dot. The two, the two mistakes you made at that position was entrusting in a guy who can't sustain being a healthy player. First and foremost, You don't even know if he's good or bad. You don't even know if he's good. All you know this for a fact is he can't stay healthy. So you missed on that. Then you let a productive player go that you found and you developed. And you didn't want to pay him 5 million bucks more than what you were paying him. He was making one five. You didn't want to pay him 5 million more when he wanted to go home. Stop that. You know how you make a player stay? Give him more money. Dude, look at what they did in Cleveland. They extorted Deshaun Watson. He was never going to play in Cleveland. You gave him more money and a guarantee. 
Great teams all have former players in the front office. Yeah, and you got bookworms. And you got bookworms. Bookworms. I, I find that combat, Mamba, to be an absolute disgrace to the you, why have a leadership council when the general manager's in your meetings every day? Dallas Goddard told you basically a meddling general manager is in the way every day. That can I tell you this, guys? Hey, Khalid. We now know what the problem is. It's Howie. The players have a problem with Howie Roseman. Firing this. Hassan Reddick said, yeah, we had a problem with, you know, the new scheme and all. Code. Howie fired at D.C. at 10 and 3. Goddard, he had a general manager's in every meeting. Don't you see it? The players are telling you what's going on. You're too dumb. Some of you not to see this. Thank you, James. Dude, they're telling you, they are telling you the general manager is in the way. You've got players telling you, so the front office is in every meeting, and he runs back to tell Jeffrey Lurie what's going on in team meetings. My show, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Doesn't matter who you hire. Doesn't matter what you do. This is going to be done their way. You can't think like football people. You've got to think the way that they act. So. No matter what it is, you can't think like a football person that is going to maintain success. Know this. My prediction of a five-win football team will be a fact in two years. You're a five-win football team in five years. No, two years. Excuse me. Five-win team in two years. Yeah, of course. You're trending there now. Wait till Kelsey retires. Thank God for Doug. This ain't going to be smooth. How is how he's good with contracts? That's about it. Winning a Super Bowl, give him. Uh, here, I'll tell you this game time. Brian, you know what he's great at? Building a veteran roster. He's I, I'll, I'll give you this, Brian. Hey, look, he's great at contracts. I would give him a total raise for the contract that he Got Jalen Hurts, finding Gardner Johnson. Those are all strokes of genius going down into the rock. Those are great. That's a general manager's job. But I would also fire him for the rebuilding or the retooling of that defense and keeping the same scheme and not bringing a higher coordinator or a better coordinator in. That's a fireable offense too. Or putting a 
And again, I want to be careful with Brian Johnson because you know why? I don't know if Brian Johnson could be a good coordinator or not. Look at Raheem. Raheem Morris now was not a very good head football coach. Here's a great example right here. Raheem Morris was in over his skis as the head football coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were hoping to get another Tony Dungy because it looked like it. Instead of getting the right guy. Raheem Morris now is one of the best candidates to be a head football coach, and I would hire him in 10 seconds as my head football coach. He would hire a great coordinator. He would, I would love to see him as the head coach of the Chargers. Raheem will know the mistakes he made. He is a quality man. Okay, he is a quality man. Great. But again, you've got to go to the right organization. Dallas Goddard is telling you your general manager is in every meeting. I don't get, I don't know, you know, I'm going to talk about potential free agents that Howie, and this is an area that I think he does do well in. Okay, and it's his show. I think Howie enjoys the offseason. Hey, do you guys agree? I think Howie Roseman enjoys the um, offseason more than the regular season because he's more of a star. Now Howie's at practice and in team meetings again. Is he the coach of the team? Is he the coach of your team? Hey, get this. Always remember something, folks. See, I won't be addressing people today. Some of you, most of you are, are good. Okay? But when a person like me says something and it strikes a nerve and you've got to call a radio show or post something a billion times, you know you're working. Always remember that. It's called winning. Thank you, Charlie Sheen. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. We have, we have people that watch the show outside and inside the building. And you know what they do? They wake up every morning and they can't wait for two to six. So that they could type their little hearts out. Do you ever reach over and kiss your wife? <laughs> or is it just, hey, I got to get the sales. JoJo goes, sales is like the NFL week to week. Yeah. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. Yes. Yes. JoJo, yes, we finally agree. Yes. If you can have, wait a minute. The Eagles were the best team in the league seven months ago. Or no, wait. What was, hey, Tone, how far ago? How far ago were the Eagles the best team in the league? Two months ago? Then it was the Niners. Now it's the Ravens. The league flip-flopped? Okay. Here's another one. Who's a better quarterback? Lamar Jackson? It's a great one. Who's a better quarterback, Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson? Watch this. You want to see pathetic? Who's a better quarterback today, Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson? Who's a better quarterback? Wait a minute. Uh. 
pleasantly surprised. Yeah, but you guys are flip-flopping. You you guys are flip-flopping. Wait a minute. Last year it was Jalen, and it was Jalen. But some people would want to have you say that Jalen's the better player today. He's not. Isn't that flip-flopping? Yes or no? Mask, I didn't ask you if he was top five. I asked you who's better, Lamar Jackson or Jalen Hurts today. Who's a better quarterback today? Was anything anybody said? Player performed. Player got better. One player regressed. Hey, and by the way, Josh Allen, I don't know about you, but Josh Allen has 42 touchdowns this year. (laughs) Okay? You could say whatever you want. Josh Allen has 42 touchdowns. Uh, 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 And 4,000 passing yards. I don't know about you. He's got one wide receiver and that's it. And that guy has 42 touchdowns and 4,000 passing yards. Today, Lamar, it's not a debate. Anyone who feels differently is a liar. Yeah, but that just, I'm trying to make a, and I, I know you know that I am here, Tone. It's a point, though. Of course, last year, Jalen was better. Of course. But certain people would want you to stick with that same narrative and go, Jalen's better, when no one in their mind would take him over Lamar Jackson right now. Nobody. Not a person on the planet would. Nobody would. Allen needs more tools around him? Probably. That's why I thought Dalvin Cook would have been a good sign up there. Ravens do? Hey, Ravens have a top flight offensive line. Wait a minute. See what that guy just said? The Ravens have a top flight offensive line. Well, if I'm not mistaken, don't you have three pro bowlers on yours? Am I I wrong when I say that? Don't you have three pro bowlers on on, on your O-line? You got three pro bowlers, don't you? There's three pro bowlers. Dickerson, Kelsey, and Lane. And you could even made the comment that I think Mulata should have been on that. Man, you are very inconsistent. Always find a way to justify your actions. I'm not inconsistent. I'm as inconsistent as the league is. And if that's where you're taking it, so be it, guy. The league is an inconsistent follow. Prince, whatever, dude. The same teams that start the season out in September are not the same teams that finish the year. And for you to make that comment, that's exactly the truth. And I'll take that as a compliment. You're damn right. The league is as inconsistent as I am, because that's what I cover, and that's what we all see. Okay? You're right. I'll, I, I, you're right. How about this? Your football team, as is consistent. Hey, do you think your football team has been inconsistent this year? At one time, you were 10-1, and one, and now you've lost four or five. Is that inconsistent? One time we were talking about that team being a Super Bowl team. Now we're talking about the team being a one-and-done team. Is that a flip-flop and inconsistent? Well, shit. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the way the NFL is. 
So yes, Prince. Prince, I don't run from that because that's exactly what it is. You were 10 and one and now you've lost four or five. Is that a flip-flop from us saying you were a Super Bowl team and now we're talking you being a one-and-done team? Is that a flip-flop? Well, shit, play better. You can't. Because you got a guy in your team meeting. You got a little guy. The little guy sits in the team meeting. Here's Howie. I wonder if he's in there to make sure there's no noise. To keep everybody calm. Man, I would hate that. Someone watching over me. My general manager, my team meeting like that. How uncomfortable that. He must make that building uncomfortable. No wonder Chip put him in a broom closet. He must make that whole entire organization for the players completely uncomfortable. He just must make that room uncomfortable. You know that one guy you have in the room that just makes you uncomfortable? He's it. Okay? He's totally it. By the way, today, our good friend Tone will join us at 3.30. We are going to check in with our friends up at the Rhode Island Hooters. Our friend Emily, big sports person, one of the iconic Hooter girls is going to join us. That will be at 4.30. The greatest of all time, the Philly Godfather, will join us and help you try to make yourself some big money. Absolutely, my friends. Hey, don't forget my friend Tone is throwing out a code word right now. Give you guys an opportunity to win yourself some merchandise and also some great gift certificates from our friends at Hooters. Absolutely sensational. Don't forget our lunch specials Monday through Friday, 1130 to 3. Boneless wings. Happy hours Monday through Friday, 4 to 6. Listen, if you don't want to go into any of the places from Rhode Island, down through Jersey, Delaware, all the way to King of Prussia, you can go to the app at Hooters2Go.com. Get the food. Take it with you. Also, find out more information on where the locations are and all the great specials, plus the calendars we have. The 2024 calendars are out with $100 coupons that are inside. You can go to northeasttutors.com. That's northeasttutors.com. Hour number two. Keep it here, National Football Show. Hooters, the 